This video is brought to you by a product I use weekly, Harry's. More on them after the reaction. Citizens of the Reject Nation! It's time for Fallout Episode 5. I'm Greg. This is Michael. I haven't played the games. He's played all the games. You know the drill. Like it. Thumbs up. Get it? Subscribe, because we got more episodes to cover. Prepper, they edited it. Thank you. Also, Patreon. Thanks to all of you joining us over there. Full length reaction watch song where you sing it with your own copy, and we cover some other stuff exclusively over there as well. I'm ready to kick butt, butting, kicking. Let's go! Well, watch again! Oh. What are we looking at? Is this a flashback? Oh, damn. We're the Maximus. You rip that thing inside out, it's guts went flying everywhere? I thought it was dead meat. <laughs> Aw, I'm having a smile. You should brand me. You should. It really hurts. I want you to. I want you to, please. <laughs> Michael Emerson said. <laughs> It is your most sacred duty to protect the Brotherhood, after which it is your most sacred duty to protect me. Do you accept? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, he's so happy. Oh, he did an intense one. Oh, thank you. My titus. He could just never leave the suit. Turn your base. See the look on everyone's faces. And they see us. Return with the target. Titus and Thaddeus. The T-Boys. Yeah. <sighs> Who's going to tell him? Before we go back, there's probably something I, I I should tell you. Yeah, whatever you want. I'm officially your squire now. You can tell me anything. Something gonna interrupt this moment. Thoughts, regrets, love life stuff. I don't care. I'm gay. <laughs> oh damn, he's just showing him. Maximus. Wow, was not expecting that. What did you do? Person I Titus. Oh, uh, he's he's dead. <laughs> wow, that was not well thought out. You and I, we, we just have to get our story straight before we go back. They're gonna kill you. Come on, I mean, they don't have to find out. It's the Brotherhood. They'll find out. Oh, damn, this is really bad. Oh, uh, nope. Should have known better than to trust you. Oh, shit. I'm sorry. Oh, he's got the key. Don't leave me in here! Kill you, Thaddeus! You should have! Oh. Stick your head's mine now! No! Get back here! Please! He did not think this through. Maximus, what is wrong with you? And the dog's going with him? Wow. Uh. That dog has that dog, had so many companions. That dog just switches owners like nobody's business. Dog's a whole. Yes. Yes. I hope that we spend the entire episode in here, and there's one fly, <laughs> and then it's directed by Vince Gilligan. Ryan Johnson's the one who directed that episode. Was he? Yeah. <laughs> he really does not like going to different locations. <laughs> That's a Star Wars joke. No. Really? Yeah. <laughs> oh, Rad Roach. Ugh. Lucy? Yeah. Fate. That's how you do it. I thought the way Max was handled that was really bad. Wasn't smart at all. That was you, back in Philly? That was me. Just someone stole my fusion quick, please. Can you please let me out? Believe me, I really want to trust you, but I've had a rough week. <laughs> Needless to say. A uh, man I left with with whole, whole body. Hey, I'm looking for his head. I mean, that's why I'm passing through. Hey, you have radiation sickness. I, I got rat away, left in the sleeve of my armor. You can have it if you let me out. Take the chance. I really want to believe you, but practically every person I've met up here has tried to kill me, so. If you don't get this medicine, you're going to pass out. And if you lose consciousness... His voice sounds like it could be in a video game. So what's your name? Say your real name. I'm Knight Titus. I'm Lucy. There's a manual option. Just... I got it. <laughs> she knows. <sighs> oh, wow. 
some real luck men. A T60, right? I've seen these in old engineering manuals, but never in real life. <laughs> well, save her. Be her hero. I could go for some corn. How did the Raiders get a hold of my mom's pit boy? Maybe the logs were falsified. Why? The mom died in the famine. There wasn't a famine. How'd you get an intuition about this one section? So in the beginning of his game, he picked really high intuition. <laughs> Aww. Oh, man. That's too bad. It looks we like they were know trying what's to get in there. But why? Oh, shit. That's intriguing. What's in 31? Are you going to report back the truth? Hmm. If anybody asks where we were, I'll have a heart attack. <laughs> Norman? Where were you? Chester? Where have you two been? I think she knows more. Oh, for sure. We've been planting Plant tate potatoes. Potatoes. Well, run along now. Very well handled. What remarkably different sized humans. Mm -hmm. I had no idea people lived in those vaults. What did you think was in them? Monsters. <laughs> No, regular folk like me. That's what's in 31. Could be experiments. Oh, well, my squire stole something vital to the Brotherhood. They were trying to get into 31. Why would they try to get in if it's a monster? Yeah. I've got to go after him. Oh, so he's not going to mention the head. You guys have more of those T-60s and guns? I have a tracker that'll lead right to that head. Seeing as everybody on Earth seems to be after that thing, I'm guessing that's what you're looking for, too? What are you suggesting? You team up. We use my tracker to catch up to your squire, get the head, and take it to the Brotherhood. In exchange for my help, then you'll lend me the services of five or six of your knights to save my father. Yeah, just say yes. Figure it out later. I get that trust doesn't come easily up here, but you can trust me. You're not from a place where the worst someone can do to you is forget to say thank you. Thank you. Not a unity between them. Glory, glory, hallelujah. America's back, baby. <laughs> We're doing it. Ah, oh, man. Smell that, Greg? That's the sound of freedom. That's patriotism right there. I want more. <laughs> more freedom. Ah, good. More freedom. <laughs> Ah, God, more freedom. Mm -hmm. This is getting better all the time. Oh, Betty's running. Good. I've got a bad feeling about this election. Uh, yeah, things can bring out the worst in all of them. They're so good about keeping their emotions in check and it's going to rile them up. I'm sorry, Rich. I just feel that in times of crisis, you need someone with experience. Hey, it's your vote. No hard feelings, Davey. <laughs> I'm never sharing pie with Didn't have to tell him. Oh, this poor guy. The water crisis and the prisoners. Just all the uncertainty. Really, it's fine. We vote in private booths for a reason. Right. <laughs> Betty's already been overseer once. I'm going to vote for Betty. I got that impression. <laughs> what are you doing, man? <laughs> He's not going to vote for himself, is he? Oh, who am I kidding? <laughs> <laughs> It's actually bad luck to vote for yourself. Can I ask you a favor? Okay. Can you tell me what's happened in the last 200 years? <laughs> Exposition. Let's do it. I know about the Great War and the bombs falling and the 320 years of American history. I just need help with the last 200 years after the bombs fell. Damn, America hasn't been around that long. The bombs fell when I was a kid. Is that what they tell you in your brotherhood? Wow, they're lied to. We don't even know what's in it. That's true. Oh, well, they're just bonding like people. I come from a place where the world is what you make of it. Hmm. Up until I was six, I really thought that the big light in our farm was the sun. Hmm. My mom used to take me to play out under that light. I could feel the sun baking my skin. I realized it was just her that made it all feel so real. Now, how do you relate? So, like, Earth is round, Earth is flat. Where are you guys at on that these days? Hey, we're still trying to figure it out <laughs> here, Lucy. So the bombs dropped in the 2070s in Fallout timeline, just so you know. But he was saying the bombs dropped when I was a kid. That's what Maximus just said. No. 
Yeah, he did. He said that, and that's why she was like, is that what they tell you in the Brotherhood? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, the bombs dropped in the 2070s. Yeah. Twenty seventy seven. Thirty one to thirty three. It is my honor to announce that with a ninety eight percent majority, <laughs> Betty Pearson has been elected vault overseer. Oh. Oh my god, she is the thread. I'm so honored <laughs> to step into Peg McLean's shoe. She is the thread. One piece of archival evidence that they could not seem to bury. Congratulations, Overseer. Thank you. Follow it up. Follow it up. <laughs> oh, that's a scary look. <laughs> this is a really scary look. <laughs> I love that she's a terrifying character. <laughs> hey, now. You on? No. Probably should. Probably should have lied. Are you armed? No, we're just gonna walk on by. That okay with you? Give me your gun. There's no one here but us and them. Us or them. <laughs> <laughs> I missed that. <laughs> What's happening over there? Yeah, we're just being careful. You can come on through. Are you trying to f us? The gun? <laughs> I think we're all feeling some tension. <laughs> yes. This is her job. This is what she does. Well. Why don't we all take a deep breath? <laughs> what the f are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> I love how we did any close-ups on them. It's just from their POV. This is an LA person visiting New York. <laughs> how about on the count of three, we all raise up our arms? We already said we don't have any weapons. And neither do we. Could we just give it a try? Raise up your arms. It's amazing anybody made it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ever. On the count of three. Ready? One, two, three. Hey, cooperation. <laughs> They're going to see the gun. Now let's tuck behind her. Oh, that's good. Have a great day. This is like pandemic times. <laughs> I like your hat. Steven Dorf. Oh shit. Stand off. Brotherhood. Oh no. That was a really well done scene. That scene was excellent. Again, like her hope for everything is just shattered. She was sheltered. Why? No. Oh. Fiends. Should have known. I absolutely adored that whole build up and scene. I was like, this is about to go fine. You've been shot. It's just a scratch. It happens all the time. <laughs> What's a fiend? It's people who eat people. Cool. I hate it up here. <laughs> <laughs> it's a civil defense water pit. Oh, sweet. I have a couple of those. Nice. Work with Woody, overseer of the future. Man, the tension that last scene was, I'm, I'm gonna, that's probably going to be one of the scenes I remember the most. That was great. You ran a great campaign. I know. Must have put 10 posters up. <laughs> put a few posters up and let democracy run its course. <laughs> hey, man. You know, I ran once. And then that weevil famine came. Lost to none other than Hank McLean. You know what they say. When things look glum, vote for somebody from Vault 31. What in Vault 31? When things look glum. I voted for Betty. Oh, that's so interesting. Maybe Betty's something. Like, actually, something. <laughs> not more than. Maybe human. they're not even from a vault. Yeah. You don't think it's weird that we always elect an overseer from Vault 31? They did the same exact thing in Vault 32. Honestly, no. By all accounts, Vault 31 has more resources, better education system, and, you know, they got that phrase. They said, don't trust management in Vault 32. When things look glum, Vault 31. <laughs> it's a powerful slogan. This is getting really interesting. It's feeling like Black Mirror. <laughs> Let's fall out, baby. 
You might as well be asking why everyone prefers Jello cake to apple pie. I don't know why. They just do. Well, the texture of Jello cake. <laughs> you like the texture of Jello cake? <laughs> we just snuck into a vault filled with dead bodies, not to mention steps from Vault 31. Mm. How's Vault 31 different from here? What did your dad tell you? Not much, actually. Gee, I don't know. Maybe the mashed potatoes were a little better? That is what my dad used to say. Maybe that's it. Must be true, then. Oh, was she, like, brainwashed? Memory wiped? I am so excited to unravel this mystery. Couldn't rest the mashed potatoes. Yeah, I'm, like, really hooked. I know I've, like, my, had my talks about, like, it's, it's slowly becoming the most interesting part of the show. But before, I was like, it's the least interesting part of the show. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's the fault, <laughs> man. This really should have been a weekly show. God, the fact that they didn't the theories and stuff that would have been just been such yeah. a waste. Yeah. Uh, oh, look, more civil defense water. It's definitely the same barrel that's been just rolling around all across the set. Why? Shady sands. You never heard of the New California Republic? 34,000 people lived here after the war. The, the entire purpose of my vault was to come up to the surface one day and, and restart civilization. It, it's, it's reclamation day. It's what keeps us all going. And oh, man. It already ha happened without us. These two have both succumbed to a belief system and need to find their individuality. Well, if it makes you feel any better, it didn't work out. Mm. The California Republic is one of my favorite Fallout things, and I hope that we get to explore it a little bit. It was first introduced in the, like, the OG, OG Fallout games, and they have some of the coolest armor. Mm. Damn. Jeff Bezos! This is expensive. <laughs> Holy shit. The library. It was worth my Prime membership. Oh my god. What happened? It's the same thing that always happens. War. Everyone wants to save the world. They just, they just agree on how. <laughs> well put. I wonder if anyone survived. I did. Oh. So it did happen when he was a kid. He thought the bombs going off in the end of the world, his end of the world was the fall of the NCR. Not the old world, but the new California Republic. Yeah. Wow, he did Indiana Jones it. Yeah, he did. I stand corrected. Oh, buddy boy. This is more than just a graze. We have to get you something somewhere. You can keep it together really well, man. We need to get the head. The head can wait. Come on. I hate whenever a woman says that to me. Greg, <laughs> telling your wife. Look. Well, you, you've entered Tim Burden's Fallout. <laughs> <laughs> Spookville. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's a Vault Tech hospital. There could be anything in there. Yeah, like a first aid kit. Uh, never. Never gone into a vault tech building and the way this show narratively intertwines these like side missions without making it feel like we got to do it because of video games is so well done. I, <laughs> when I step that. out. I'm like, oh, yeah, that's probably like a video game level. Right? No, here. You say exactly. something. I'm like, oh, shit, it's probably like a video game level, but it doesn't feel that way at all. It doesn't feel like we have to do this. The, you know? the side quests yeah. are weird. so well done. Like, yeah, this is, this is really like they they narratively like tie this all together so well. I'm not even like thinking about a video game at all. It's crazy. And this is exactly what it feels like too. It's so spooky. The lighting. I love how it's called Hawthorne and it feels like the Hawthorne Labs and Stranger Things. <laughs> oh, no, that's Hawkins, my bad. Yes. Still works. Sure does. Oh, she really just barged right on in, huh? Yeah, man. She's a go-getter. She needs that first aid kit. At least this hospital is really well laid out. Oh my god. It's an experiment. Oh no! I hate vault -Tec. It is important to me, for us all, to see this place together. As a family. So that we can heal together and rebuild together. Did they clean up the mess? 
Now, I spoke with the overseer of Vault 31, and we agree these vaults of ours are too sacred to leave empty, which is why I am announcing a resettling campaign. Oh, boy. Some of us will stay home to rebuild 33. Others will be moving into Vault 32 in the coming weeks. Oh, no. That's so messed up. 24 little owls. You got to speak up, man. That's so freaking creepy. What? The sun <laughs> and the flowers. But he, they must have got rid of like the dead bodies and shit. Oh, yeah. they, they, they not yeah. only got rid of the dead bodies. They cleaned it up, man. They oh, refurnished. Oh, this is it. This is it right here. This is it. Oh, my God, yeah. New carpets. They was blue deer. Oh, the, the toaster. toaster. Oh, this side toaster. Stop saying that word. Sorry. My bad. <laughs> okay. All through deer. Wow, what's going on in 31? Three democracies and three vaults, separated to prevent the spread of threats, but connected to aid one another in times of need. But they run the same experiment? That's exactly what they're gonna do. We will carry on until the day we bring that light to the surface. And the different. Oh, she knows. Find anything interesting? Great job cleaning up. The Raiders destroyed so much, but not our spirit. Oof. When my mother died, what happened to her pit boy? It was buried with her. How are you so sure? You buried she buried him? Because I buried her myself. Me and your father. <sighs> she knows I just give these like subtle little looks. <laughs> oh where, oh where. You just shouldn't go exploring because you're just gonna get trapped. That's smaller. <laughs> Oh shit, falling objects. That's you. <laughs> Were they taken to another vault? Very, very likely. It was a vault tech building. Where are we? It's okay. We'll be all right. Yep. What is this place? We're in the best place in the world. They're in a vault. Oh, but what are they doing in this vault? I think this is the one that we saw in the trailer. I don't remember the trailer, huh? Oh. Well, don't say anything. I won't say anything. Oh, the new California Republic. Damn, mystery be afoot here. Thrilled to be partnering with a brand I've been using for nearly two years now, and that's Harry's Razors. I'm generally more drawn to anything that goes against the norm, and Harry's does just that in the grooming world. They saw the high prices in the industry and decided to blaze their own trail with quality and affordability. I keep a beer, but whenever you see these cheeks in the neck clean, then that's the work of Harry's right there. Keeps my wife happy, and Harry's makes it effortless. They're precision blades that cut smoothly with less drag, making every shave satisfying. And yes, it's versatile for other areas too, you know what I mean? So as a Harry's devotee, I can vouch for their value. You can experience unparalleled comfort and quality in your grooming routine where exceptional craftsmanship meets affordability, making a smart choice for a top-notch shave without breaking the bank. Their kits and value packs for shaving are unbeatable, but Harry's is not just about shaving. Again, they offer top quality, thoughtfully designed grooming products, including shampoo, conditioner, and amazing body wash without the premium price. Quality, affordability, that's a thesis of this. Now these I actually pulled right from my own bathroom. I regularly use their five blade razor with a nice weighted handle and their foaming shave gel man this that ball it is a game changer i just like the feel of it now i have to commit to keeping this in my hand the whole time because i'm not going to go to the bathroom in the middle of shooting this the handles they feel perfectly balanced and the razor sleek design is a classy addition to my bathroom and the quality of the shave unparalleled gotta reiterate keep part of my weekly grooming ritual because their entire range of products fits seamlessly into my routine stuff no reshoots here their german engineer blades are durable and refill plans are economical rarely use the word economical but i'm using it now plus their commitment to high customer satisfaction and no risk trial makes harry's a no brainer Brainer. This gel really does feel good. Let me say once more, choosing Harry's means quality and affordability. By grabbing your $13 trial set for just $3 at harrys.com slash rejects, you're not only getting a great deal, but you're also supporting this channel. That's harrys.com slash rejects for your $3 trial set. Stay sharp and embrace the extraordinary with Harry's. Till next time, Reject Nation. Till next time. They got all the right beats, Greg. All the right beats. Oh, God, I love this show so much. It goes all the way up the ladder. We gotta get to the top of this. We gotta get to the, the top of this, the bottom of this. We gotta go all around. All around, up and down. 
need someone to be like, I trusted you when you did uh, it online. I'm so happy that we're exploring the back story of the new California Republic. This is like everything I've ever wanted as a Fallout fan. Uh, this is truly intriguing mystery. Yeah. I am I am hooked. I have no idea where it's going, and and I think every storyline is so gripping, and and it's like watching a messed up Stepford Wives. Um, yeah, that idyllic utopia uh, of a perfect society. You're, and you really you're like I don't know exactly. I have no idea what's going on. Like, are they like what is going on? Like, clearly there's some. It feels like the old days are lost. You know, where you're like, I'm, yeah. I'm not, I feel like I learned so much, but I learned nothing. No, <laughs> you know? That's exactly, <laughs> and not having any idea of like, are they good? Are they bad? Yeah. Am I good? Am I bad? Is this person brainwashed? Yeah. <laughs> or are they not brainwashed? Yeah. No, uh, it's a, a, that, and that's the beauty of Fallout is it's constantly, it, it's throwing everything on its head all the time and keeping you guessing in the most miraculous and wonderful of ways. And I think the really, really exciting thing is that because of the fact that like, like vault tech and the, like the, it's a story that literally spans hundreds of years. And I think that's just the coolest thing in the world that yeah. like it, you are seeing these things. Uh, and, and each fallout game takes place at like a different point in time, which also adds additional elements where like, it's, it's kind of neat. Um, for me as like a fan of the games to like position and be like, oh, okay, this is where we're at in the the overarching like. Oh, that's cool. You know, um, trying to like connect all those dots. Uh, but it's I, it, I'm so impressed, particularly with how they've done such a good job at like for somebody that's like a huge fan of the games, they've been able to like feed like the big, like macro wants that I wanted for this series mm. and also have like not failed in the slightest at this extremely focused, personalized drama. Um, and it's fun. It's dark. It's weird. It's scary. It's just all these bonkers things combined into this like perfect smorgasbord of like weird fallout magic. And uh, and it just it, it feels real, which I just I don't I have no idea how they're pulling that off. Like honest, like for such a fantastical, weird, ridiculous world, I'm like so impressed that I am like fully bought in. And uh, yeah, God, I just I love this freaking show. Um, well, it kind of feels like the road um, mm. when they're traveling together. Uh, what's her, what's his name, Magnus? Maximus. Yeah, Maximus. 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 Uh, Maximus and Lucy traveling together uh, and watching their kinship form. The note that I was like popping up in my head is like, you know, you get to know these characters individually. And one of the strengths of the show is that whenever they have these characters actually interact with each other, mm -hmm. even though they spend so much time apart from each other, especially in the beginning, everyone has chemistry and everyone reads off of each other very well. Everyone bounces off each other really well. And I love that you you have a true ensemble of a show like mm. that, where it does it like part of the excitement is oh we're actually going to really see, you know Maximus and Lucy interact with one another, and you see how this relationship is going to be completely different than all the other relationships that she's formed, and it, and anytime you think it's going to go down a cliche path, it actually doesn't go down a cliche path, mm. and I appreciate that they drive away from that, and it's so much about watching the affect of it because like I l absolutely adored that scene um on the on the train on the, on the railroad on the bridge. Oh, yeah, yeah. The, the bridge um when they saw them in the distance and they couldn't make out the strangers and then it, you you're like maybe Lucy's I right. look away yeah might work. Gonna, might be able to be a positive influence on the world and you really don't know which way it's going and yeah. they're playing the music and then in a heartbeat it goes wrong yeah you know, no, that, there's a moment where I like literally thought they were gonna like compliment each other's outfits. I, uh, <laughs> like I literally was like, oh, it's gonna be like nice hat. I thought it was just uh, gonna go fine, and it didn't. Yeah, and I, I thought, it, and the way how you watch like Lucy just so devastated, yeah, uh, is so yeah. wonderful. So I think the way that they're illustrating our characters yeah. is beautifully done. Yeah. And, and but at the same time, Lucy barged into the creepiest, sketchiest 
shouldn't go in their room and then whimsically ended up in a place that is arguably the safest, best possible option of where she could have landed. Yeah. And uh, I think that kind of gets to the heart of it, of like, uh, it, it's both of these characters. I'm particularly excited for, for Maximus because I think there's been a... Maximus feels like he can't be himself or he has to be this caricature of himself. And I feel like Lucy is going to be the character that can help him be actually Maximus. And there's like that kind of like big moment when she like asked for his name and I was like, please say your actual name. Like, please say your actual name. And then when he said Titus, I was like, damn it. Yeah. Um, well, I think their philosophical, the way they believe is they both follow an order, right? Yeah. And the difference in the way they follow is Lucy genuinely believes in everything she was taught. And like that golden rule shit, like she firmly believes in that stance as a, as an individual, as a person. Yeah. And, Maximus like needs something to believe in, but he has no individuality. And you're watching these characters who led their whole lives designed by like this construct of of a belief system. Yeah, and now they have to make their own choices in life. Yeah. It's and it's really yeah. interesting to pair those two up yeah. with each other, and then have like the ghoul who's been like a wild card amongst all to, this. To take that to like a larger like macro philosophical level the whole world that they have inherited has been shaped because of decisions made by people who were put in that exact situation. Sure. Yeah. Like, like ultimately the Chinese and the Americans who were indoctrinated could not come to terms. Mm. And that led to this. And I think that's like, and he, uh, uh, uh Maximus like kind of hit that to like, yeah, at the end of the day, it's like a bunch of people trying to save the world, ultimately making the same mistake over and over and over again. And I thought that was like, wow, what a profound realization for somebody that is actively participating in that same exact process over and over yeah. and over again. And it's like, it's so, uh, and again, Ron Perlman, where are you? Like the phrase, and they better end the series with it or I will actually be upset and I will, I will write a letter to Todd Howard. Uh, but like war, war never changes. That is like such a fundamental truth of of this, like humanity, like humanity never changes the good, the bad and the ugly of it. Right. And I think that Lucy represents the good of it and uh, the ghoul represents the ugly of it. And, you know, there's a whole lot of bad, but there's in between it, there's a whole lot of other stuff, too. And, and you take it and you you compound it and ultimately at the end of the day like it is what you make it and it's all very fragile uh and i think that's something that i've always loved about the fallout universe is that it exposes a lot of truths you know that it's it's a very you take away the pleasantries you take away that idyllic 1950s and all the and you peel it back and at the end of the day like if if you give in to what we are, not everybody's great. But yeah. also in the absence of that, you also see the best of people. And I, I think that's something that I, at least in my Fallout playthroughs, and again, Greg, you have no context for what I'm about to say. But like, I look at like the Minutemen in like Fallout 4, for instance, and like... Like, oh, we got to go save another settlement. You know, there's a settlement in need. Uh, <laughs> like... There is something to be said about in this helpless world going around aimlessly and saving a bunch of NPCs over and over and over and over again. And it's redundant and it feels pointless. And yet at the end of the day, like it's this like radical act of goodness in this world of absolute carnage and awful. And um, I think, you know, it, it, these dystopian type series and 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 worlds tend to get this notion of like we're painting a picture of like what the future is going to be like when in reality i think they're actually painting a picture of what our reality currently is sure and the radical acts of rebelling against that and showing that we can come back from it 
uh, and I think that's just like such a powerful, interesting piece of, of art. Mm. And maybe that's not what Fallout started as, but it certainly is what it's become. And there is like this, and I'm sorry for going off on a tangent here, Greg. Um, when Fallout 76 came out, uh, which is the, the, the MMO, mm-hmm. there was like a whole lot of questions about like, oh, what's going to happen when you give like players nukes, you know, like, are they just going to like bomb the crap out of each other? And what ended up happening is the nicest group of players in the history of online multiplayer games. I remember I like showed up, I started playing, I was like struggle bussing and somebody comes up to me and I'm like, oh, I'm about to get like absolutely wrecked by this guy in power armor. And he goes and he emotes and he waves at me and he throws a, a little like goodie bag oh, at nice. me and I check it and there's like a hundred stim packs. There's like a hundred Radaways and there's all these guns and these armors and there's a little bobblehead. And I was just like, oh my God, like in this post-apocalyptic, uh, post-apocalyptic world, these people are showing so much kindness and... You know, I, I I think maybe it's something to be said about Fallout fans, and I think maybe that's that's how they view the wasteland. Um, but it's it's why I love this franchise. It's why I love this series, and I think they captured the magic of that. And um, yeah. Anyway, rant over. That was a beautiful rant, beautiful monologue. And this is also uh, the other thing we didn't think about is that this is also a fantastic advertisement for people to play the game because I'm, I'm like, damn, I gotta play this game. So. Dude, it's, it's worth it. Um, uh, question for the audience. What Fallout game should Greg start with? My suggestion would be Fallout 3. That's where I started. It might be hard to play these days because it's old now. came out in 2008. Uh, but Or Fallout 4. Fallout 4 is probably a good entry point. Um, but I'd love to hear your opinions. Uh, but do us a favor, Reject Nation. Don't forget to comment below with your favorite part of the episode and what game you think Greg should play first. Be sure to hit that notification bell. We're going to watch the next episode right now. Are you down? Sure. One more? All right. We're going to do another episode right now. We'll see you there. Peace. Tyler Tyler Haig. Haig. Tyler, listen up. I am ready for your character arc to begin because we always talk about how chill you are and that's cool i like that you're chill i like that you're a friendly guy i like that you are a protective spirit but a spirit not prone to lashing out but you know what i feel like uh what's the arc you could do do with causing some chaos (laughs) into your own life it's gonna get worse all right first of all start taking a lot of caffeine all right you want to up your energy level because think of how many more shows on how many more screens you could take in with your ADD brain, Still you know, stimulated. Uh, mm-hmm. No, in fact, imagine just how many things you could see outside in this life. You would be running through the streets, peering through every window, into every doorway, seeing who you could meet and how many people you could talk to individually, except also all together in the same Good room at once. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, you know, you could be out there hoofing it, growing calves the size of tree trunks, and being like a Forrest Gump of the people. Because, again, you're such a kind heart. Like, it just emanates from you, and it, and it you know, stretches across time. It's been a minute since we've seen each other face to webcam face but uh but dude i feel like you would be out there in the streets just making people's lives better you could be a nomad tyler you could be like a a lord of the rings you know one of those big jolly dudes who's just like always on the move but he always comes through town once in a while and when he does he's got fire you're a wizard harry so uh (laughs) we love you tyler no matter which of the choose your own adventures of life you decide to ultimately embrace. You know, we love you and are compelled by you as a character. So keep on keeping on. Or don't. Or change it up. Either way, we'll be tuned in next season. Love you, buddy.